Canada has a long, dark history of its relationships and treatment of Indigenous peoples. But one story is a bit of a mystery. The Beothic, who lived on the island of Newfoundland off the coast of Canada, are said to have become extinct in 1829. How did this happen? To further complicate things, the oral history of other Indigenous nations from the mainland of Canada claim that the remaining Beothic stayed hidden from European settlers. Which raises the question, what really happened to the Beothic? To fully understand what happened, we have to go back in time a couple hundred years. Beothic, in their language, means the people. Although they only numbered about 500 to 750 in population at the time of the arrival of Europeans, Newfoundland was their traditional territory. Newfoundland has a rugged terrain, and the largest food source on the island is what's in the water fish, seals, and shellfish. The Beothic primarily lived on the south and northeast coasts of the island. But in the 15th century, Europeans started to arrive. The Europeans, who were primarily English and French, as well as the Basque and Portuguese, built settlements along the coast in the summer while they were fishing in Newfoundland's waters. The Beothic were weary of the arrival of Europeans, they avoided them as much as possible and moved their settlements further inland, away from the coast. The Beothic diet changed drastically as a result. From relying heavily on seafood, to now hunting caribou, trapping small animals, and foraging. This sensitivity to foreigners might suggest prior conflict with Europeans like the Vikings centuries earlier. The Beothic would wait for the Europeans to depart and scavenge the abandoned camps for leftover tools every fall. They didn't have to barter or engage in commercial activity like many other indigenous groups across North America in order to secure goods. But everything began to change in the 17th century. The British and French started to arrive in larger numbers and set up permanent settlements. The British settlers continued to explore the interior of Newfoundland and began hunting and trapping, which encroached even further on the Beothic's food source. As a retaliation, the Beothic began to seal traps and occasionally attack British settlers and trappers, but the British settlers retaliated too. John Payton Sr. led two raids in the 18th century, shooting and murdering some Beothic at their inland settlement. By 1768, the Beothic had a population of about 350, and by 1811, this population was drastically reduced to only 72 people. The loss of people during this time period is believed to be caused by tuberculosis infections. But it was the events 10 years later that would lead to the demise of the Beothic. Or so we have been led to believe. In 1818, the Beothics rummaged through the fishing equipment of John Payton Jr. and the elderly John Payton Sr. who had led bloody raids on the Beothic a few decades earlier. The following year, the Peyton men requested permission from the Newfoundland governor to raid the Beothic camp once again to locate their stolen equipment. The governor consented, with one catch. They must capture one Beothic person to bring back to the capital city, who the governor could befriend and use as an interpreter further down the road. During the raid, John Peyton Jr. captured Damastuit, the wife of Chief Nonos Basut, who was murdered trying to prevent her capture. Damastuit was captured in March, and was thus given the name Mary March upon arriving to St. John's, the capital of Newfoundland. A half a year after her arrival in St. John's, the governor agreed to send her back to her people. Before the ship arrived to the Beothic settlement, Damastuit passed away from tuberculosis at the age of about 23, on January 8, 1820. Her body was brought back to the Beothic settlement by British settlers, and it was later laid to rest beside her husband. In the 1850s, the bodies of Damastuit and Nonos Balsut were dug up and their skulls brought to Scotland for examination. In April 1823, three years after the death of Damastuit, John Payton Jr. encountered three emaciated Beothic women searching for food on the coast. It was Shauna de Tit, her sister and her mother. Shauna de Tit was the niece of Damastuit and had witnessed her capture a few years earlier. The three of them were held captive and brought to Exploits Island. Shana de Tit's mother and sister soon died of tuberculosis. Shana de Tit, who was renamed Nancy April because she was captured in April, lived at Exploits Island for five years as a servant to John Payton Jr. 
Back in St. John's, scientist William Epps Cormack founded the Beothic Institution in 1827 to gain public support for the Beothic and to learn about their way of life. The Beothic Institution set off on an expedition, but Cormack found the Beothic camp deserted. After much searching, they concluded that all the Beothic had died, except for Shana de Tit, who was living at John Payton Jr.'s house on Exploits Island. Cormac had Shana de Tit transferred to his own house in St. John's, where he tried to record as much information from her as possible, including history about the Beothic, cultural practices, and lists of Beothic words which have been used to conclude that the Beothic language is likely related to Central Algonquian languages like Inu and Ojibwe. Shana de Tit contracted tuberculosis and died at St. John's Hospital on June 6, 1829, only in her late 20s. So what happened to them? Did tuberculosis wipe out almost the entire population? Did other British settlers lead raids in secret on Beothic camps murdering them? Did they seek refuge elsewhere? Or were they able to hide themselves away in the rugged terrain of Newfoundland for cultural survival? Oral history from the Mi'kmaq who live in Atlantic Canada including Newfoundland and the Innu who live in northern Quebec and Labrador tell us that the Beothic did just that. Some Beothic remained living on the island. Others fled to Labrador to live with the Innu or to various parts of Atlantic Canada to live with the Mi'kmaq. Despite this, the extinction of the Beothic stands. Until Mi'kmaq chief Misil Joe of the Miabugek First Nation in Newfoundland began the process to have the skulls of Damastuit and Nonos Balsut sent back to Canada from where they had been in Scotland for almost 200 years. In March 2020, the remains finally returned to Canada and a study was published a month later by Memorial University in St. John's, which confirms that, after a genetic analysis of the skulls, there is strong evidence that ancestors of the Beothic are still alive. If this is true, science confirms the oral history that the Innu and Mi'kmaq have known to be true for so long. This begs another question though. Who are the Beothic of today? And how were their ancestors able to survive with such odds stacked against them? Make sure you're subscribed to my channel with the notifications turned on to be notified of the next episode in the series.